Hello, hello, hello. Today we're doing episode 14 of Draw Your Journal. Let's flip to the first page, which is draw your comfort. Draw something that makes you feel cozy. For this page, I'm using a separate piece of paper and I've actually already sketched something. I'm taking out my eraser and erasing all of the lines so that they're very light and you can't see them anymore. Where did they go? Mysterious. I'm taking out my alcohol markers. These are my Cali Art art markers, a redundant name, but I do like these alcohol markers. They've gotten a decent amount of usage from me over the past few years. I've never actually used the fancy brand of alcohol markers, so I can't really compare for you guys, but I feel like these are fine. And they were only like $30, so definitely way cheaper. I'm starting off my coloring process by coloring anything that is brown in. We've got some chocolate covered strawberries. This is the chocolate part of the chocolate covered strawberries. And I've also got some chocolate drips dripping down the side of a milkshake. If you don't know what Draw Your Journal is, it's a prompt journal, but it's supposed to be more of a diary prompt journal. Each of the prompts are things about you, and as you draw in Draw Your Journal, you're basically drawing about your life. Similar to how you would write in a journal or a diary about your life, this is more of an artistic version of that. So for this page, when it said draw your comfort, I thought about milkshakes. I love milkshakes, and I find them extremely comforting. Whenever I'm upset, I always say, I need a milkshake. And it doesn't even have to be a particular flavor. I genuinely love all milkshakes. I like chocolate milkshakes probably the best. Vanilla's good, strawberry's good, and we could probably get a weird one. I had a churro flavored milkshake the other day and it was still delicious. Something I love in particular and I find very comforting is when there are those crazy milkshakes. Some have like Fruit Loops on the side or Fruity Pebbles. Others have like marshmallows and churros or cookies and Reese's. Whatever it is, there's like these insane milkshakes. I truly appreciate the creativity that goes into these kinds of milkshakes, and I've tried to incorporate a bunch of different things that I like and find comforting. Chocolate chip cookies, chocolate covered strawberries, I love marshmallows, I love hot fudge. There's a lot of chocolate items actually in this, now that I'm thinking about it. To our right, we have a bunny that's climbing a ladder and she is kind of pushing over the milkshake. You'll notice this bunny does resemble a certain bunny that I sewed recently, Snowball. And I've also created Snowball's friend, Frosty. Frosty ran into some issues over here and this is why I remembered why I stopped using the Cali Art markers. And it's not because they're not good, it's just because I had used them so much that they actually ran out of ink. Everyone ignore what's happening to Frosty right now, because I'm going to fix it with some colored pencils. In these three cups hold my collection of Prismacolor Premier colored pencils. I particularly love using these in conjunction with alcohol markers. In poor little Frosty's case, we're just basically using the colored pencils to cover over all of that horrible blue. But in Snowball's case, I actually did a lot of shading with the colored pencils and I was able to cover over the pink part on her paw. I was also able to fix her little bows, which were quite a mess from the alcohol markers. Part of the reason the alcohol markers were so messy was actually not its fault. I was coloring this on computer paper, which is really not the thing you're supposed to use for alcohol markers. There's a different kind of paper that makes it not bleed as much. Help. I just never purchase the materials that I'm supposed to purchase in order for things to work properly. I have no excuse, I'm so sorry. Typically with this, I would stop here after the colored pencils, but in this case, I am actually going to add a third layer, my magic puffy pens. I did a video with Magic Puffy Pens exclusively and you guys seem to like it a lot. Well, some of you liked it and some of you were very unsettled. And I think the conclusion was that these would be better for a textural addition to a different page. Just a, a little light topping. Like I shouldn't be exclusively coloring a full page in Magic Puffy Pens. Instead, I can use it as a little extra something something. As requested, yes, sometimes I do actually listen to requests. I did purchase a heat gun because I was told that the heat gun would make my Magic Puffy Pens work better. Gotta plug it in. 
Upon using this heat gun, I discovered that everyone was definitely correct. This worked so much better than my hair dryer. These things immediately puffed up so much faster, so much puffier. It was so much better and I love the magic puffy pens. I know some people are really unsettled by them, but I gotta say, I think they're a really fun addition to a piece of art. And here we have the final page. I gotta say, this is kind of a silly way to represent a milkshake. My concept was the two bunnies are in love and they're sharing a milkshake. I thought it was very cute and comforting as well. And on the right, we do have a yellow version of Snowball. I didn't have a correct white. I guess I'll have to sew a Frosty plush to go with Snowball's plush. Okay, let's move on to the next page. I am actually flipping to a page that has been irking me that I never did it. I don't know why I never did, but somehow I skipped the materials page when I did the beginning pages. I thought this would be the perfect page to use in conjunction with the Magic Puffy pens. These are the colored pencils I decided to use. They're kind of on the brighter side. They're not really pastel colors. They're more of neon. No, they're not neon. They're vibrant, vibrant colored pencils. Here's my thought process. The page before this also used these exact same colors, but everything was in blended diagonal lines. To maintain a similar theme, but also do something different, I decided to make circular patterns with the blended colors. At the end, it starts to look like a jawbreaker kind of looks. Each of the circles are different shapes and they kind of drip in different directions. They also start with different colors. I'm attempting to make sure that every color is placed next to a color it's actually next to in a rainbow, but red and green are next to each other right there, so not all things are perfect, but in general the circles are supposed to be in rainbow order. You'll notice that I am coloring very lightly for the first pass. That's just because Prismacolor premieres in particular need the color built up slowly over time. Once I got the basic placement of where the colors were gonna go, I went back and started to darken things up slowly. Basically, if you press too hard with the colored pencils initially, bad things happen. I still probably am not the best at using these, but yeah, I'm trying. My real problem is that I'm very impatient and I don't like when things take a long time, so to build colors up slowly over such a long period of time, layer after layer after layer. So I really do get impatient and eventually I just start blending things with a colored pencil colorless blender. Was this totally ready to be blended? No, probably not. I can see white spaces in between the color and that's usually a sign you're not supposed to blend yet, but I can do whatever I want. And now it's time for the magic puffy pens. I have decided that every utensil that's featured on this materials page is going to be filled in with a puffy pen color. I thought this was a fun way to incorporate the magic puffy pens and add a textural element to the page without totally making the whole page a big puffy mess. Although I will say the crayons did end up turning into a big puffy mess because all of the colors started to blend together. I should really have waited for them to dry before adding more of them. It's honestly looking more like I melted the crayons, but oh well. As I started to fill in these objects, I realized it would probably be better to space the liquid out and make it used a little more sparingly. Kind of use it as more of a detailed addition rather than the whole thing. So as I progressed, I added less paint on some of the objects. My absolute favorite was the watercolor paints because that was fun to put the little dots. And now it's time for the puffy pens to rise or to, to puff up. I did realize that you can't hold the heat gun too long on this because things do get a little crispy. Honestly, heat guns kind of freak me out because they get very hot and it's like hot air blowing and you can like burn yourself really easily with them. So just be careful. Also, please everyone look at the glue. The glue rose so quickly, I was in love with it. All right, I finished up applying the heat and making the puffy pens puff up. And here we have the final page. You'll notice that some of the objects like the pencil look like they almost went on fire. And that is because yes, indeed, they did almost go on fire, got a little crispy, but they still feel the same. They're just a little burnt in some places. 
If you are going to get the magic puffy pens, I actually would highly recommend getting a heat gun for it because it does rise a lot quicker and a lot easier. The burning slash fire potential is a bit alarming, so I would say just make sure you're not applying the heat for too long. I applied the heat for too long because I was filming at the same time and wasn't paying attention. But you, you'll probably be fine. If you want to see more Draw Your Journal episodes, I have the playlist linked in one of these two boxes. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week for another video. Bye!